today we're getting into back roll variations. There's so much possible once you learned that first little one. So we're gonna go toe side, we're gonna go double, and you're gonna learn something today. Let's say you just landed your first single back roll. What is the next trick to look for? It's not a double back roll because that is quite a big step. We wanna take small steps. I've put all the back roll variations in order, so have a look at the natural trick progression. We'll start off with a popped back roll to toe side. This one is quite fun. After that, you can do a sent back roll with a tail grab, a double back roll coming out with a pop, and then after that, a double back roll where you send the kite past 12. The toe side back roll is another fun one where you can first land heel side to keep it easy and then we're gonna do a toe side back roll where you land toe side. You might have noticed that I added the word pop and send to the back roll variation list. And this all has to do with how you steer your kite. On a send back roll, you steer your kite past 12 and the kite will lift you up. Usually this gives you more air time. On a popped back roll, you get your height out of the carve into the wind and your pop off the water. It usually has less air time and you have to spin a little bit faster to make your rotations. When trying a new trick, you want to set yourself up for success. And this means riding in the correct conditions. For rotational tricks, we want to have about 15 to 20 knots and take something from a 15 square meter to a 9 square meter and make sure we're well powered. Don't try it on a seven or a six square meter in 30 knots because the steering mistakes will be punished quite hard. Next to that, you want to make sure that you have all the needed steps and can do them. If we're gonna try a back roll to toe side, you of course wanna be able to do a back roll, but it's also very important that you can ride toe side. So keeping that in mind, we are gonna go into the first trick, which is a back roll to toe side. Initiate this trick like a popped back roll. The difference comes when you can spot your landing as you have to twist your board and hips to a toe side position. Once you've landed, it's important to continue on a crosswind course. For this trick, it's very important that your kite does not pass 12. It's a popped back roll to toe side. If your kite is at 12 during your landing, it will be hard to ride out with speed and make the twist to toe side. If you are having trouble to make the twist, but your kite is in the right position, you can always try letting go with your front hand. This should make the rotation a lot easier. The rotational speed of a back roll to toe side is very similar to a normal back roll. So don't try to take off with more rotational speed. The last 180 degrees comes out of your hips and not out of your takeoff. Next up, we are going to look at a back roll with a tail grab. Start off with a sand back roll where you steer your kite past 12 so it lifts you up. Just before you reach the apex of your jump, you let go of the backhand and grab the tail of the board. Control the kite with the front hand and steer it back for landing. It's best to practice the tail grab with a sand back roll. Depending on the kite size you're riding, you might even want to place the power line between your index and middle finger. This will really help with the steering and make sure your kite doesn't dive back into the wind window. Next to that, make sure you extend your front leg and retract your back leg to make the grab a lot easier. If you pull both your legs in, you're going to have to reach a lot further. Next up, we look at a pops double back roll. We want to pop off the water with more rotational force so we can add the second rotation. Stay compact through the entire trick so you don't under rotate. The landing is usually a bit harder because you only spot it in the last second. <laughs> alrighty, alrighty. So, uh, oh, almost got stuck there. Fun little fact, this is actually my wrong side. I'm doing stuff to the left now, but I usually do this to the right. So we're all learning something today. So keep that in mind. It can look like this, but at the moment it will also look like this. <laughs> For that additional rotation, it's very important to carve hard and fast into the wind for extra rotational force. Next to that, you want to minimize your kite steering. That means put your hands in the middle of the bar touching the power line and like that, you won't make big steering mistakes. Stay compact. The smaller you stay and the more compact you are, the quicker your body will rotate and the easier it will be to land this trick. In the beginning, you can keep your kite 
quite high. Don't keep it at 45 degrees because you will really have to take off fast and the landing will be hard. If you keep your kite a bit higher, it's easier to make the full rotation. Next up, let's look at a sand double back roll and see how this differs. With this sand version, there is way more time in the air and it's less important to take off with a lot of rotational force. Additionally, we'll rotate on a different axis that is more vertical so we can keep our legs extended. Try and focus on your kite steering as this is the key to landing this trick. During this trick, we'll be spending more time in the sky and a steering mistake is easily made. That's why it's very important that you've practiced the sand back roll numerous times and have the kite steering baked into your muscle memory. During your rotation, you want to look over your front shoulder and you want to look over your front shoulder the entire time. This will make it easier to spot your landing and to keep orientation. Next up, let's have a look at the popped back roll from toe side. Ride in with speed and pop to a toe side position. From there it's important to keep line tension and carve hard towards the wind to pop out of the water. Look over the left shoulder when popping out of the water to initiate rotation and spot your landing as soon as possible. This will make the heel side landing a lot easier. For this back roll variation you'll have to be able to pop from toe side. Trying it in the beginning might be a bit discouraging because it actually screws with your mind a little bit but keep on trying and I'm sure you'll get it. It's very important that if you want to pop from toe side that you carve into the wind to pop out of the water. And this is something people often forget. So really dig those heels in and carve towards the wind. Next to that, it helps a lot if you ride with speed and use your kite a little bit. Don't send it past 12, but you definitely can keep your kite a little bit higher. And you might have guessed it, but the next trick on the list is a pop from toe side with a back roll, landing toe side. That didn't come out so nice. We now know the takeoff from the toe side back roll and the difference for this toe side landing only starts the moment we take off from the water. Try to keep your hips twisted during the rotation so you come out of it in a toe side position. Ride out on a crosswind course so you maintain speed. As we're already in a toe side position on the takeoff, Try to keep your hips twisted for the entire rotation so you can land toe side again. It might also help if you let go with that front hand again. Now it's kind of the back hand if you take off toe side, but it's very similar to a normal back roll to toe side. Let go with that front hand so you can make the twist to toe side. And with that, we get to the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comment box. Subscribe, that would really help. Give me a like and I'll see you on the next one.